Hey, if you got a 99 to 03 carbureted diner or twin cam, I'd listen up. We're going to be talking about everything ICM, ignition control module, also known as rev limiters. So why you would want to upgrade one, what do they even do? I got the Dynatech and the Daytona Twin Tech here, and we're going to go over both. We're going to compare them, pros and cons, and understand how they work. My name's Cam. This is Gnarly's. There is three reasons why you would want to change one of these stock ignition control modules. And we're going to go over all of them in great detail. That is to change timing. That's to change your rev limiter. And that is to get the famous sound, okay? So we're going to go over all three of these. But hey, this is part one. I'm going to talk all about timing. Part two, we're going to go over rev limit and sound, okay? So listen. Timing, timing 101. This topic is so complicated, guys, but I broke it down as easy as I can possibly make it for you to understand. So I need you to go get your coffee, go, go get your energy drink, go take your Ritalin, uh, go do some methamphetamine. Whatever you need to understand this video, go get it right now and pay attention. My name is Cam and this, this is Timing 101. So hey, I, I made this just to give you guys something that you can actually see, right? This is gonna be our crankshaft, so this would be a connecting rod, these would be the flywheels. Here's the piston. This green part would be the cylinder, the head, and the spark plug lives inside the head. So let's look at some stuff. As the piston is coming up on the compression stroke, meaning there's air fuel in here, we're gonna compress it into the small space, we now have to fire the spark plug. The spark plug is obviously going to ignite the air fuel mixture, which is going to push down on this crank. And that's what's going to give us rotational power. Okay. Look at the crankshaft as a circle. And we know on a circle, it's going to have 360 degrees. Let's take this for example. The connecting rod is perfectly straight up. That means the piston is totally at top dead center. We are going to call this zero degrees. Okay. Let's go back to right here. We're going to call this 90 degrees okay now if i asked you when does the spark plug fire and you said perfectly at zero degrees i'd tell you your engine's gonna run like shit okay and this is why if we fire the spark plug right here bam the crankshaft is going to keep rotating like this now the air fuel mixture it needs time to completely combust by the time that happens our crankshaft's going 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 let's say it gets to here almost 90 degrees and now we're making peak power right here. Well, that's inefficient. See, we wanna make that peak power, let's say right here. We make it too far down here, but we're farther away from the piston. See, you want the peak power to be as close to up top of here as possible without being straight up and down. If peak power occurs when we're straight up and down, we are putting stress on the bearings, on the bushings, on the connecting rung, on the wrist pin, uh, on the piston itself, this is not good. So we want it when the crankshaft is shortly after top dead center, which now we have a clear path to go this way. But the second thing is, if we fire, if we're making peak power too early, the piston's gonna be fighting its way up to the top and it's gonna run like shit. You're gonna have a lot of vibration in the bike and you're gonna be seriously doing some damage to the top of this piston, to all these bushings in here. Every single component that the connecting rod, crank and piston is attached to is going to take damage. We call this too advanced. Advance. If we're making peak power way down here, this is too retarded and that's a scientific word, that's too retarded. The name of the game, remember, hey, remember that game that had the big pole and you had to hit the ball at the perfect time to make the perfect power? That's exactly what the spark plug is doing. And this is called timing. We are timing the spark plug to go off at a perfect time to make peak power in the engine. If we hit that ball too soon, it's bad. Obviously, the ball's probably gonna fall flat or it's, it's just not gonna perform correctly. If we hit the ball too late, it's gonna barely have enough momentum to make it around the pole. But if we hit the ball just perfect, that ball is gonna go flying and it's gonna go a lot faster. So this is timing and I need you to start understanding that this stuff matters just as much as exhaust and air cleaners matter, timing the spark plug absolutely matters. Let's talk about the second piece of the puzzle. Let's talk about the crankshaft and the bottom end. 
Also, thank you to my friend Vinny Corvey, who had some bearing failure. He actually donated his whole bottom end to Gnarly's and the Gnarly's channel so we can all learn. So now we actually have a training aid that we get to practice on, which is pretty cool. So here we go. Here's the bottom end. Let's say we start the motorcycle and it's moving at 950 RPMs, okay? Bam, 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 bam. And that's what we're hearing. Bop, 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 bop. On idle, we are gonna say that the spark plug fires about 10 to 15 degrees before top dead center compression, okay? So on the compression stroke, before top dead center, that's this, before top dead center, we are gonna fire the spark plug 10 to 15 degrees. Let's look at this. That is about here, and let's say here, okay? Arbitrary. So here's 10 degrees, here's 15 degrees, okay? Every engine is going to be relatively different, whether you have a M8, Twin Cam, Evo. These are not set in stone. It's all going to depend on every single engine. So let's say we are going to fire the spark plug right here. Okay. So now the piston is going to keep coming up. The air fuel mixture is starting to catch up. The piston rounds the top. Now it's going to act completely on the piston, pushing it down at peak optimal timing. Okay. However, let's go back to our crank now, okay? Going back to the crank, that's idle. 10 to 15 degrees. Ba -bom -ba 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 -ba. Now, when we hit the gas, right? And this thing is spinning really fast, like this, right? Do you think this is gonna change? You think we're still gonna want 10 to 15 degrees when we're spinning the engine that fast? We're gonna wanna advance this, possibly even to 20 degrees maybe even all the way up to 30 degrees, depending on your engine combination. I mean, that's crazy, but hey, you never know. You're gonna know on the dyno. So instead of firing it somewhere in here, we're firing it somewhere down here. And this, when the engine is going insanely fast, combustion is happening relatively the same speed. We are firing the spark plug sooner to compensate for how fast this crankshaft is rotating so we can always end up firing right here. Here is the second reason that you would want to play with the timing. And this is a big one. And this is called increasing compression. Now, when we talk about increasing compression, which we're going to talk about way more in future videos because it's an amazing performance upgrade. When you increase compression, it increases all over the power band, not just at specific points. When we talk about increasing compression, here is the bottom of the piston. Here is the top of the piston. We call this stroke, stroke, okay? So we are saying that we're gonna compress this area however many times into this area. And typically it's about nine to one on a Harley Davidson. It could be 8.9, it could be 9.6, but realistically, let's just go with nine to one. We're not gonna go too far into this, but Realistically, the more that you can compress this air fuel mixture into a smaller space, two things happen. Pressure goes up because think about it. It's like an air compressor. The more that you're squeezing air into the compressor, the pounds per square inch are going up. So pressure goes up, which is good because once we explode those molecules and once we light them on fire, we have more pressure acting on the top of the piston. Good thing. Second thing, when we increase compression, something very special happens as well. The rate of the reaction goes up. Now think about it. If we want a chemical reaction to take place and things are spread too far apart, it's gonna take longer for this reaction to get to this reaction to get to this reaction. But when we smush them together, increasing compression, well, these reactions are happening very quick and they're happening a whole lot quicker. So two things, cylinder pressure goes up and the rate of the reaction goes up. Bear with me, you're about to understand this in two seconds. So what does that mean for us, okay? Why the hell am I even telling you this? So let's say if we increase compression from nine to one to 10.5 to one, this is a very common compression ratio, okay? Well, we no longer want to fire the spark plug at let's say, at let's say 15 degrees before top dead center. Because remember, the rate of the reaction is going up, meaning it's happening quicker, okay? So before when we were firing the spark plug at 15 degrees and we were making peak power right here at the Happy Meal place, okay? We are no longer doing that when we increase compression because the air fuel mixture is burning quicker and faster. 
So now, let's say we're probably making peak power right here. No good. Let's say we're making peak power now right here. No good. So when we increase compression, we want to take some of that timing out. We actually want to fire the spark plug later, okay? The timing will change. So instead of firing at 15 degrees, well, maybe we're going to fire it at 10 degrees, let's say. Okay, well, now we're making peak power again at half a meal. Same thing. So when we hit the gas and the engine is moving a lot faster and we have an advance of 30 degrees or 25 degrees or whatever it may be, well, now we're, we're in some serious trouble. Now the spark plug is definitely firing too soon. So some things that we want to do is we want to take some of that spark out. We want to fire that spark plug later when we hit the gas or else we're going to run into a serious problem when we increase compression. So two things, when we add performance parts and we're spinning the engine faster, we want the ability to add a little bit of timing. And on the contrary, when we add compression, we want to be able to take out a little bit of timing and fire the spark plug later. So these are the two reasons why we would want to play with timing. So something else I want to show you, just like from school, here's a graph. And this is an X, Y axis graph. This is very simple to understand. Let's say on this side, we have timing. And on this side, we have RPMs or revolutions per minute. So how fast the crankshaft is rotating. And then when do we fire the spark plug? Let's say this is zero, this is 10, this is 20, this is 30, okay? And over here, uh, 1,000, which that's where the bike is gonna typically be running, 900 to 1,000 RPMs. Then we have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, okay? This is how a typical graph is gonna work. Blue is gonna represent stock, right from the factory. Let's say when the bike is idling at 1,000 RPMs, we're right around like maybe like 12, 15 uh, degrees advance. I'd, I'd be arbitrary. So we're right here, okay, at 1,000. When we go to start giving it more gas, well, timing is going to go up, okay? So it's going to look like this, 1,000. Okay, cool. Now we're starting to add more timing in, okay? And eventually it's just going to peak and it's just going to say, hey, no more timing. That's enough timing. Okay, so this is what stock is gonna look like as far as a graph. Now when we start adding a lot of these performance parts, we can put a little bit of timing in. So we're gonna start at 15 and let's say, hey, we're gonna go to like maybe 24 or something, okay? So this is an example of what we call advanced curve, okay? This is an advanced curve right here, all right? And on the contrary, remember we talked about compression right? Maybe we don't want to start here just like we did with the other bikes. Maybe we want to start at 10 and then we just want to add in a little bit like this, okay? So this is a high compression motor, okay? So these are all examples of advanced curves, all right? Now let's go back to the revolutioners. All right, hey, so that is timing 101. Thanks guys. If you made it to the end, you're an absolute legend. Uh, I love it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm going to try to be a little bit more active in this comment section to help you guys out. So let's recap real quick. We talked about peak optimal performance as far as timing. And that's when the crankshaft is after top dead center, you're making peak power so it can push down on the crank. We talked about initial timing and why it's kind of static. We talked about advancing timing when we're hitting the gas, why we need to advance the timing a little bit more. We talked about advanced slopes and advanced curves because once you guys go into Dynatech or Daytona Twin Techs instructions, they show you advanced slopes and advanced curves. We're actually going to go over it in part two. Part one is all about timing. It's very scientific, but part two is all about wah, bop, 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 and having fun. So cool. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Until next time, my name's Cam and this is Gnarlies.